Hey guys, it's Graham. What's cracking? We continue our reading of What So Proudly We Hail with the second installment in this compendium, which comes from Mary Anton, a Russian immigrant in the late 19th century, who came to the United States, got educated as a child, and found herself extremely inspired, you know, not just by our lore and our songs and our poetry, but about the, the few historical figures and heroes that we had garnered as part of our American legacy in such a short period of time. She says right here after she, re she reads about uh, the Star Spangled Banner, reads the lyrics of it, she says, where had my country been until now? What flag had I loved? What heroes had I worshipped? The very names of these things had been unknown to me. Though she had a very strong ethnic bond with Russia and the cultures thereof, uh, she didn't enjoy the concept of heroes. Uh, but when she came over to the States and she started to learn about the American Revolution and George Washington, the, uh, the so-called father of our country, you know, the, the indispensable man, she felt completely inspired to adopt this man as one of her heroes. Um, looking back at the last 246 years since the signing of the Declaration of Independence, we have a, a long roster of historical figures that we can be inspired by and that we can be proud to say are American heroes. Uh, you know, people that inspire us to improve our own personal legacies, to add to the, uh, the brightly woven tapestry that is United States history. I've got a book right here that you have no doubt heard of. And if you haven't heard of the book, you've at least heard of the musical that it has inspired. Ron Chernow's Alexander Hamilton. I was lucky enough to read this book before I heard about the musical, almost right before I heard about the musical in 2015. Um, I guess the musical had been around for a while, but I kind of live under a rock being a trucker and a late night artist and all that stuff. So when my friend Matt told me about it, I went and listened to you know all four hours of the soundtrack or whatever it ended up being and was completely blown away by Lin-Manuel Miranda's ability to work the entirety of Alexander Hamilton's life into this musical. Uh, I still haven't seen the musical itself. I understand it's on a streaming service somewhere, but that's, that's not really the point. Um, we live in an age of, you know, obvious widespread division in this country, and it's almost like we'll find any excuse we can to be divided from one another, whether it's on the basis of sex or race or religion or where we come from you know any of that stuff we we keep increasingly putting ourselves into boxes and and kind of walling ourselves off almost from each other um, taking apart the soup that is the american experiment i i almost regret the level of naivete that i had when i first saw that or first heard the the songs from Miranda's musical because I thought maybe this is finally it. Here's a here's a full cast of uh, Latinos and Black Americans that are singing about these founding fathers and these early American figures that didn't look like them, but they're adopting them as their own. This is incredible. Um, in the years since then, much like everything else in American culture and society, even the musical of Hamilton has been turned into this divisive thing, you know, not just by the fans of it, certain cast members, you know, whatever. It's, it's almost a tragedy. Like we have this opportunity to kind of revel in our shared culture, but once again, we find ourselves tearing down our own heroes or tearing down our connections to them. Um, it's just, it's a travesty. You know, I, I look at the historical figures that we've had in the short life of this nation, and there's no shortage of them. Uh, one of the best books that I read this year was a semi-fictionalized account of the life of Bass Reeves, who was a, a black man who um, accidentally killed his master when he was a teenager, had to go flee into the Oklahoma Territory, lived a hard life, raised a bunch of kids, had a couple of families, you know, buried wives along the way, and at the ripe age of 50 became a U.S. Marshal a career that he would have for another 30 years. Could you imagine being a, a rough and tumble, horseback riding, outlaw chasing man into your 80s and, and being successful at it, collaring 3,000 people in three decades? 
you know, bringing in, in bounties, bringing justice to those who would otherwise escape it. I don't look like Bass Reeves. I'm not as tall as he was. Got a little bit of a complexion difference here, if you might have noticed. I don't care. He was an American, and I, I look at him as a hero, a man who overcame the limitations of his situation and did not accept them. Um, Gary Paulson, who wrote that account of him, you know, laments in the epilogue that uh, we don't even know where Bass Reeves is buried. And I don't know if he's a figure that I read about in public school. You know, I had, and I had great teachers. I, I understand there's a huge breadth of material to cover in a short period of time. I've talked about that before. Um, you know, but I've got a great attachment to so many American heroes that, that don't look like me. And they don't have to. They have embraced the American ideal. They have assimilated themselves to it. Shouldn't we all? Um, you know, Benjamin Franklin famously said, we have a republic if we can keep it. And if we can keep it, that's a matter of, of our own will. Each of us individually, all 330 million people that are in the United States. You know, will we keep this republic? Will we take as much responsibility for ourselves as we can? Will we make the most of ourselves that we can? That's what Bass Reeves did. That's what Alexander Hamilton certainly did. And that's what this young girl, Mary Anton, did. And I, I think that's the value of that story being included in what so proudly we hail. So, uh, again, I highly recommend you guys check out this compendium. I've loved every single piece of it that I've read so far. And that's why I'm going to keep sharing them with you on an individual basis. Uh, until next time, check out other reviews that I write for fiction, sci-fi, and fantasy at upstreamreviews.com. And until then, drive safe. I'll see you out there.